So every now and then I like to do these servant evaluations, you know, instead of doing a traditional review like I've done a few times for a servant, I'll kind of go back and give a retrospective on them based on my usage of that servant over the past couple of years. And I was thinking I should maybe do one for Da Vinci Rider, but I wasn't fully sure until I did a little bit more testing. You know, I don't have Da Vinci Rider myself, but I thought, you know, she's a really good looper. If she can do this with one Castoria, that's impressive. But if she can do this with one Castoria against Berserkers, the class that gives you the least amount of refund back, then I'm definitely going to be making this video. And well, since this video is out right now, you can tell that she was able to get that done, which I'll be showing throughout the video, you know, using her with double Castori, which obviously she excels at, but then just using a Nero Bride as essentially a baby Castoria fill-in, and Da Vinci Rider is still able to get the job done. So as always, make sure you drop a like in the video, subscribe for daily FGO content, and let me know your thoughts in the comments down below after I've given my thoughts on Da Vinci Rider, although considering how good she is, I'm pretty sure you've already got your own thoughts on her. But like I alluded to at the very beginning of the video, she is a very, very good looper. You know, everybody knows that, and it's kind of hard to not be a good looper despite only having 0.49% NP gain and a three hit AOE NP. That sounds like a recipe for disaster for most servants, but when you're giving yourself 20% NP every single turn on your first skill and 20% NP on your own NP, and then you have a small 10% battery as well, plus a pen skills are in the game now, so you could be starting off with anywhere from 10 to 20% NP. It's kind of impossible to not do well at looping because at that point, I don't even know if you're technically looping or you're just raw NP farming, which again, that's a bit extreme to say, but you know what I mean? When you're getting 40% NP back every single turn, it's really hard to not be doing very, very well. Plus, I like the added fact that in case you are going to bring her into like CQs or something, she does actually have really good usage in that front because that 20% battery she's getting on her NP, that's not just for herself. That is for the entire party. Same thing for the battery on her third skill. It's only a 10% charge because she gives it to the entire party while also overcharging everybody's NP stage by one. Granted, it only lasts for one turn, which is a little bit annoying. It's still useful, but it is one of those things that I kind of wish was on a three turn just so you weren't kind of forced to use all of your NPs at once, but again, with her giving everybody, you know, basically 30% NP after she fires her own, it shouldn't be all that difficult for you to be firing NPs alongside her, which is good because think about all the great arts units that you're going to be using alongside her. Castoria, you get more solemn defense. Merlin and Proto Merlin, you can get extra stars. And again, I know someone's going to be like, Merlin with an arts unit, but... To be fair, Merlin offers very generic support aside from the buster buff, like literally aside from that buster buff on hero creation, he fits into pretty much any team comp because all of his buffs are super generic. So technically you could use him if you don't have, you know, your own Castori or something. But even someone like Tamamo benefits very heavily from that because she gives you more NP back on her own overcharge. But then even if you want to start looking into Someone like Waver, who everybody probably should have, you know, with clearing Fuyuki and getting your free five star. But even if you didn't pick him for that, you're going to have another chance to pick him up later. And his overcharge, something that people really don't talk about, does give him a better stun chance. Now, it's not all that crazy because it just goes from 50 to 57.5. But look, any additional bonus to get that stun to be a bit more guaranteed, considering it's going to hit the entire enemy party, is going to be absolutely massive. The only unit that I can think of that is a support that doesn't have the craziest overcharge that kind of fits in line with your standard idea of a support is Reigns because her overcharge just lowers the enemy's critical attack chance from 20 to 30 percent if you get that one extra overcharge but even that is kind of nice because it means you're not going to be getting crit as often so it's not just a unit that can take care of her own NP sustain, but she just makes sure the entire party functions like a well-oiled machine, just dumping NP into everybody. And then if you want to use her with another like pseudo DPS servant like herself, she's giving you a 30% NP damage buff to everybody, which is a ridiculous amount of NP. It also, by the way, makes her really nice if you have Oberon. Again, unfortunately, couldn't do it myself to show the actual raw numbers you can get to. 
But when you start considering things like Black Grail plus her own 30% NP damage buff, plus Oberon's NP damage buff, and then his third skill, things can start to get a little bit ridiculous because I think the only criticism that I have heard for Da Vinci Rider is that maybe her NP damage isn't like the craziest thing and there's no ramping damage or anything along those lines because she just has the NP damage buff on her third skill and then she has an arts buff that she gets whenever she fires her NP. It's 20% which is decent plus I suppose the 6% on her passive, so 26% when she fires the NP, but it's only for one turn, you know, it doesn't stack. But when you consider how well she plays with Oberon, it really doesn't matter at that point. Plus, I think NP1 Da Vinci Rider is fine. For most purposes, she'll be able to get the job done. It's just that, yeah, all right, moving into like certain 90 plus plus content, maybe she can't take out like the first enemy, especially if it's neutral, which you know, go figure. That's not like a normal thing that most servants are able to do. You got to be a little built different to be able to take on like the 90 plus nodes as an arts unit and still, you know, be able to do it against anybody. You know, you think of your summer Ibukis. Like when she comes out, she'll be really good for that. Although unfortunately for her, as soon as she comes out, 90 plus plus content comes out. So yeah, that's, uh, that's a little dodgy, but you get what I'm saying. I don't really think the damage is all that big of an issue. Plus, she's also packing her own dodge on a four turn cooldown, which is kind of nice. She also, for some reason, has a crit damage buff on her second skill. I think this is the only part that it's not a bad skill, by the way. I don't want somebody to go in the comments and be like, oh, look at ZTL being a negative Nancy again, which I'm not saying it's bad. It just feels really weird on Da Vinci Rider that it's like, all right, one hit of evasion and 50% crit damage for one turn. It's a little weird. <laughs> it is a little strange to me because I'm like, all right, we had this whole idea of like, oh yeah, she's going to like supercharge her NP and everyone else's NP and then she could just do some crit damage, you know, whatever. But sure, she was an anniversary unit. You wanted to be able to do a little bit of everything. I kind of understand that, but I don't know. I just think it's weird. You can let me know in the comments if I'm not the only one. Again, it's kind of nice because you can still do decent enough crit turns, especially when Lady Avalon comes out for the summer event because then it'll kind of coincide with either having like one decent crit damage turn with, you know, that 50% crit damage buff and then the 100% on a different turn, or you can combine them to have 150% crit for one turn and have a really massive crit damage turn, which again, would be pretty nice. You know, I, I could see that being fairly good, but she is one of those units that as I was kind of flip-flopping and deciding on whether or not I wanted to make this video talking about how good she is and, you know, doing this evaluation, having used her for the past couple of years, because I, I would still bring her into team comms as like a pseudo DPS, because she's one of those units where she takes care of herself and she also just gives you nice buffs to the entire party. So she's just not bad to have just sitting around. And so I was thinking about it and I was like, well, she's also one of the few servants, I think, between now and say summer slash anniversary that I really think is worth going for. Because realistically, all of the Trom servants are fairly decent to very, very good. Like none of them, I would say, are bad, except maybe Constantine. But I still need to be I'm still testing him over on JP because I need to get my thoughts in order about that guy because he's very, very strange. But he might be the only dud out of the group, you know, but even then he's not the worst. And then we have Biken who comes out and she's really strong. We have Tomatomo who also comes out and he's also very, very strong. But I think Da Vinci Rider is definitely one of the stronger contenders to summon for between now and anniversary. I mean, obviously there's Castoria who also comes back in uh, a good like maybe three weeks from now for the 25 million download campaign. But I know there's probably a lot of people that are debating on, well, should I summon for Da Vinci Rider? And so I was like, well, you know what? Let me put this video out, kind of give my thoughts on her and just say that, yeah, I definitely think she is worth rolling for. She's very, very strong. Unfortunately, if you're looking for her as a looper, it's hard for me to give you like the complete green light because Summer Ibuki is coming out during the summer event, like I think a couple of days after the event starts. And Summer Ibuki, I mean, there's no way to sugarcoat it. Her being a Berserker, so she's super effective against everybody. She has Earth Power Mod, so she has a really strong niche. She has a 50% battery, so she plays really nice into, you know, 90 plus content if you can't do the 90 plus plus content. She's just really solid all around. But I guess the one thing that Summer Ibuki doesn't do that Da Vinci Rider will do is that if you bring her into teams, or again, you have her at NP1 and you really are relying on, say, Castoria's NP, she can really help you consistently find Castoria's NP in farming setups, which is not nothing. Because again, that's a 30 to 50% attack buff. 
and it's really hard for you to not get Castoria's NP when you have two of them running around giving everybody 60% battery because of both of their charismas, and then Da Vinci Rider gives them 40% because, you know, wave one and two, plus 10% on her third skill, so it's kind of impossible to not get Castoria's NPs consistently when you're using Da Vinci Rider. She can be very strong for that. And again, going into uh, CQs, advanced quests, challenge quests, things like that, she can be very, very nice in those because she just makes your team function very, very well. In fact, one of the more fun applications to me personally is using her in that Merlin Castoria team because she pretty much guarantees that you are firing NPs every other turn if not just every single turn with how much NP is being generated between Merlin's NP and her NP and her third skill and Castoria throwing NP all over the place it's really really fun I don't know if it's the strongest and best thing that you could be doing but I would be lying if it's not a good time so again let me know your thoughts in the comments down below I just wanted to kind of drop this evaluation on Da Vinci Rider because I do think she is worth pulling for again use some scrutiny you know use your own discernment to decide that okay do you want to go for the trom guys do you already have castoria so the 25 million download campaign is not as big of a deal for you are you only going to go for one of the summer units so then you kind of have some leeway between now and then or are you going to be going for archetype earth and then trying to get all three of the summer units in that case probably save your saint quartz Obviously, though, if you have questions about it, you can come into one of my streams, which is linked down in the description down below. I stream FGO every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you have any questions, you're like, hey, man, I've got X, Y, and Z unit, and I don't care about any of the summer guys. Should I summon for the lady? We could talk about it. But on that note, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. You guys have yourselves a nice day, and I'll catch you guys on the flippity floppity.